2 Kings chapter 6 is where we are today. 2 Kings chapter 6. Interesting passage of scripture. Don't know if you've ever heard a sermon preached on it or not, but you will, Lord willing, within the next 30 minutes, have heard a sermon preached on 2 Kings chapter 6. The company of the prophets said to Elisha, Look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan where each of us can get a pole and let us build a place there for us to meet. Apparently what was going on, you remember that Elijah had set up these schools of the prophets, the company of the prophets in several cities where young men who were studying to be prophets could be taught and Elijah would make the circuit and teach them. And apparently, at least in one of the places, they needed a building program. And so, I don't know if this is the first building program in the, in the Bible or not, but there's a building program going on. And so Elisha says, go. Then one of them said, won't you please come with your servants? I will, Elisha replied, and he went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh no, my lord, he cried out. It was borrowed. The man of God asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Lift it out, he said. Then the man reached out his hand and took it. You'll notice the sermon title today is, Have You Lost Your Axe Head? <laughs> and we're going to talk about that over the next few minutes. The King James says, where the NIV says that, that made the iron float, the King James says that the iron swam. Now, I don't know if it was the backstroke or, or the doggy paddle, but, but the iron came up to the surface and floated to where the man could retrieve his accent. Why am I preaching on this today? I don't remember the first time I heard this application of this passage. But as I have been studying over the last few weeks, almost unanimously, people who write on this passage of Scripture say, there's a spiritual lesson in this for us. Yes, this actually happened. The man's axe head flew off and Elijah made it float. But there's some application in our lives because the axe head was the power. The axe head is what made it possible to cut down the tree. And when you lose your axe head, you're kind of sunk. And for us as believers, there's power that we have. Our axe head, if you will, is the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And most of us have lived long enough to understand that there are times when we lose the axe head. There are times where it seems that we've lost the power of God. And so, in a sense, and again, I don't know that that's why God had this story included in the Bible or not, but it was interesting how many people I found that said, let's use this and apply it to our lives and what happens when we lose the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So if you'll allow me to make that presupposition, that's where we're going to start, that the axe head represents the power in the Christian life. And for us, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. And there is nothing like working in the power of the Holy Spirit. I hope you've had times in your life where you were in a crisis, you were facing a challenge, you were dealt a, a set of cards and you had no idea how to handle it. And then all of a sudden, the answer came. All of a sudden, you knew what to do. All of a sudden, you felt power that you didn't know you had. And when you look back on it, you said, oh man, that was God. I remember a particularly difficult um ministry that I was going to have to be a part of, and I sent word for you all, please, to pray for me. 
And as I was walking up to where some of the hardest ministry I've ever had to do took place, I literally felt being lifted up. It was almost like my feet weren't touching the ground. I, I wasn't ecstatic, but I could feel the power of God. And I knew y'all were praying for me and that God was strengthening me for what was going to lie ahead. I hope you've had that experience to some degree on your life where you didn't think you could make it, and you did. <laughs> and you looked back and you thought, that was God. That's what I'm talking about. The power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It is not reserved for pastors. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, to the disciples, Jesus said, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. There wasn't an ordained preacher in the bunch. You know, they were carpenters and fishermen and tax collectors and they weren't preachers, but the Holy Spirit was given to them. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19, Paul says to just a group of people, I want you to know the mighty power of God working in you. The prophet Joel says in the last days, God would pour out his spirit on all flesh. Yes, the power of the Holy Spirit is available to help preachers preach, but it's also available to moms and dads to help them parent. It's available to men and women who to help them stay true to God on their jobs. It's available to you to help you get through the challenges of your day. You have heard me say repeatedly, you never have to face a challenge by yourself. You never have to face a day by yourself. You never have to walk through a valley by yourself. God is with you. And I pray that you are aware of the power of God in your life as you face the daily challenges that each of us face. God, I know that was you. I remember seeing a, a meme on Facebook a while back that says just every once in a while, I have to look up to the heavens and smile and say, thanks God, I know that was you. That's living with an awareness of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But the warning of this passage and other passages throughout Scripture is that the power of the Holy Spirit can be lost. And maybe you know what it's like to have, for whatever reason, lost your connection with God and tried to do things in your own power. And oh man, how bad is that? Somebody asked me one time, do you just ever try to preach, you know, just without praying and stuff, just in your own strength? I said, one time. I remember it distinctly. It was the worst time of my life. You know, you just, there, there's nothing better than knowing that you're flowing in the power of the Holy Spirit. There's not much worse than trying to do the work of the Lord without the power of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of people are trying to do it, and they are most miserable. The power of the Holy Spirit can be lost. Now, we know that on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, that it says the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. But this is not a one-time fixes everything filling of the Holy Spirit. Because in Acts chapter 4, verse 31, it says they were filled with the Spirit. In chapter 7, verse 55, it says they were filled with the Spirit. In chapter 13, verse 9, it says they were filled with the Spirit. In chapter 13, verse 52, it says they were filled with the Spirit. So apparently, the filling of the Spirit is something that we need on a fairly regular basis. So why would we need a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit? Somebody said this, we need to be filled with the Spirit again because we leak. <laughs> I, I think that's pretty true, isn't it? You know, sometimes just the daily grind of life and the daily pressures of life and what's that old song say? Temptations, hidden snares often take us unawares. And, and sometimes if we're not careful, in the pressures of life, we start to lose contact with God. We're not praying as much. We're not reading the Word as much. We're not 
worshiping as much. And, and before long, we realize, I need a new filling of the Holy Spirit. I leak. We need a new filling of the Holy Spirit. This is a good one. When we have increased capacity. Hopefully, as a believer, we are growing in the things of the Spirit. And as we grow, our capacity for God increases. Think about what you knew about God when you first became a believer compared to what you've learned about God through the years. And you realize, you've got a, hopefully, you've got a larger capacity for understanding and knowledge and wisdom and the things of God now than you did 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And because of that increased capacity, we need a refilling. Often, we need the power of the Holy Spirit again because of an increased demand. Now, I, I went back and looked at these different references in the book of Acts. And each one of them, when it says, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, is tied to an increased demand on the disciples. Here's what I'm talking about. We've all had, see well, we're in right now, a season of life that is very demanding. Um, you know, I, I've got friends who still are out of work. Uh, you may know people who have lost their businesses. You may know people who have, you know, had health issues, people that have had, you know, people that are struggling with addiction and those kind of things are really having a difficult time right now. We, we are in a time of increased demand. But you also understand that there are times in your spiritual life when it seems that a, a new Christian told me after they'd been a Christian a few months, said, Pastor Ken, I don't know what's going on, but it just seemed like the devil said, this is your week and I'm going to get you. you know? And sometimes we feel that way. That, you know, it's like everything that could go wrong is going wrong at the worst possible time. And we need a filling of the Spirit because of the increased demand on us. If you're going through a time of spiritual battle, maybe your family, maybe, you know, I, I tell you, one of the things that I think puts the most demands on, on parents is when our children are going through difficult times. And, and we need to be, you know, we're praying harder and we're more intense as we intercede for them. That increased demand requires an increased filling of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 4, it says they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter and John have been put in prison. In Acts chapter 7, it says Stephen was filled with the Spirit while he's being stoned to death. Increased demand. In chapter 13, verse 9, a sorcerer is trying to hinder the ministry of Paul and Barnabas, and it says they were filled with the Spirit. At the end of chapter 13, the church is undergoing persecution, and it says they were filled with the Spirit. So we need to understand that in times of increased spiritual demand, there is available for us an increased filling of the Holy Spirit. That's good news. That whatever you're going through now, God's power is available for you. And often, the filling of the Spirit prepares us for an expansion or an increase in our own ministry. But I said to you that the power of the Holy Spirit can be lost. One of the most sobering stories in the Old Testament is the story of Saul, the first king. 1 Samuel chapter 10 says the Spirit of the Lord came on him. 1 Samuel chapter 11 says the Spirit of the Lord came on him. Chapter 19 says the Spirit of the Lord came on him. Yet we know the story of Saul. And we know that because of his pride, God took the kingdom from him and gave it to David. And because of Saul's sins and disobedience, 1 Samuel 28, verse 16, Samuel says to Saul, The Lord has departed from you and become your enemy. That's one of the most frightening verses in the Bible. That because of our willful sin and rebellion against God, God not only departs from us, He becomes our enemy. 
So the question that is before us today is, what is my current position with God? Not where was I 10 years ago, not where was I six months ago, but what is my current position with God? We could have, as a supplemental text, used Ephesians 5.18. The King James says, be filled with the Spirit. I'm going to give you a little um, New Testament Greek grammar lesson here. I know you're excited about it. In the Greek language, the New Testament Greek, and the New Testament was written primarily in the common Greek language of the everyday people, the tenses of the verbs don't tell us when the action happened like it does in English. It tells us how the action happened. There's a tense that describes an action happening one time. But the present tense in the New Testament Greek language means something that keeps on happening. And so that's the present tense that's used in Ephesians 5.18 where it says be filled you literally can translate it, be being filled. Or a more, an easier way to put it, keep on being filled. It's not, I'm filled with the Spirit, now I'm going on my merry way. No, I have a responsibility to keep on being filled with the Spirit. To keep being plugged in. <laughs> uh, a family member of mine uh, used to be an on-site IT support person. And he told me that one time he got a call to go into this office where the guy says, you know, I'm, my whole system's dead. Nothing's working. I can't figure out what in the world's going on. And so uh, my, my nephew walked in and uh, looked around and just said very somberly, I need you all to leave because I need some quiet and I need some you know space so if you all just leave I'll come get you when everything's fixed once they left he closed the door leaned down turned on the power strip <laughs> and then sat in the chair for a few minutes and then said all right y'all can come back in sometimes it's just as simple as you forgot to turn on the power right and you know we've had that sometimes on Sundays Carol want to get up and try to start the plane it's not playing why isn't the keyboard playing because it's not turned on you know and and don't you do better when you're plugged into the power you know you know your equipment works better when it's plugged in and we as believers work better when we're plugged in to our power who is the holy spirit and and, and it is our responsibility you know god's power is there when this power strips off that doesn't mean the electricity's off the electricity's there we just got to turn it on Sometimes we've got to plug it in. And in our own lives, we need to remember, keep on being filled with the Spirit. Don't count on yesterday's filling. Don't count on last month's filling. Don't count on your conversion. Count on my present day, present moment connection with God. Because this man lost his ax head, not while he's kicked back in a recliner, but while he's working. And oh, there's an important lesson there. I remember when I was in school, an evangelist, you know, a mature believer who'd been through the rigors, was talking to us preacher boys. And he said, guys, I need to tell you that one of the easiest places to lose your connection with God is in the pulpit. And what he meant was, that it's possible to become so busy in the busyness of working for God that you lose your own personal connection with God. And maybe you've kind of faced that sometimes. You're, you're busy helping people, you're busy ministering to people, but you forget your own personal spiritual life. Don't be so busy working for God that you forget your time being with God. So the power of the Holy Spirit can be lost, and it's possible to try to do God's work without God's power. Maybe you've tried to do that. <laughs> it is not fun. You may be 
watching this or listening to this, and, and you're trying to live the Christian life, but you're trying to do it with your own resolution and your own power and your own resolve, and you're having a miserable time of it. Let me suggest to you, go to God and ask for Him to come into your life and fill you, and you will experience His power. Don't keep trying to do God's work in your own strength. Can you imagine if this guy loses his axe head and keeps on pounding against that tree with just the handle and wondering why in the world the thing won't work? It reminds me of a story I read about a man who went to a, a local hardware store and bought a chainsaw that said guaranteed to cut down 15 trees a day. The first day, working as hard as he could, he only could cut down five. The second day, working as hard as he could, he could only cut down five. The third day, he decided, I'll get up earlier, I'll work harder, I'll work later. He cut down seven. And the next day, he took the thing back to the store, and he said, this thing says guaranteed to cut down 15. I have not been able to do that. I want my money back. And the clerk picked it up reached down, pulled the starter cord, the engine comes to life, and the man jumps back and says, what in the world is that noise? <laughs> Sometimes that's us, isn't it? We're trying to do it in our own power. We're trying to do it in our own strength, and it doesn't work. Your cutting edge is the power of the Holy Spirit. Your advantage in life is your connection with the Holy Spirit. And when we lose our axe head, when we lose the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, stop swinging the axe handle. You're not going to accomplish anything except wearing yourself out. God's best version of you is the one that's empowered by his Holy Spirit to do his work. Stop trying to live the Christian life in your own power. You can't do it. Stop trying to do the work of God in your own power. You're going to be miserable. Keep connected with God. The power doesn't come from us. It's not, I've, I've got to grip my teeth a little bit harder, and I've got to tighten my jaw muscles a little bit more, and I've got to grit and groan and moan. No, it's, I need God's power. It's not my resolution. It's not my resolve. It's not my good intention. It's God. The axe was borrowed. He said, I, I, it wasn't mine, it was borrowed. The power that we have to live the Christian life is God's. It's not our power. It's God's power. It's not our personality or our intellect or our beauty or our presentation or what. It, no, it's God. What did he say through the prophet? Not by might not by power, by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Without the power of God in our lives, we're just axe handles beaten against a tree with no success at all. Our job is to stay connected. You've probably heard this old adage, a woodsman never loses time when he stops to sharpen his axe. I, remember, I don't remember who it was, but he was talking about how busy he was. And they said, you must be too busy to pray. And he said, oh, no, I'm too busy not to pray. Because he understood, I'm not going to lose time when I spend time with God. My time with God is going to equip me and prepare me for what's ahead of me. And if I try to do it without the power of God, I'm just going to be a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And sometimes what we need to do is spend more time allowing God to work in us so that then he can work through us. In fact, I preached a message on that several months ago. God works in me before he can work through me. And this lesson of the missing axe head is I need to make sure that I'm connected with God, that I'm plugged into his power 
so that I can do the work he's called me to do. But maybe you've lost your power. Maybe you guys say, man, you know, it's been a long time since I sensed the power of God in my life. If you've lost it, you probably know where. Now, I know your sermon notes has the fancy word for power. Poway or something or other. My computer somehow missed that. I blame it on my vision. That's what I do. <laughs> but, but you know where you've lost the power. You know if you've lost the power because of sin, you know where it was. You know where you disobeyed. There, there's a church, Revelation chapter 2, the church at Ephesus, where he says you have lost your first love. You've lost your power. He gives them the solution. Repent and do the things you did at first. See, that's the thing. It's not complicated to stay connected to the power of God. It's not easy, but it's not complicated. You repent of the things that you know that you've done that have caused you to lose connection with God, and then you go back to doing what you know to do. And it's the basics of living the Christian life. It's our faith in Christ that motivates us to stay in the word, that motivates us to pray, that motivates us to gather, that motivates us to worship, that motivates us to serve others, doing what we know to do, taking the time to stay connected to the Holy Spirit. So if you're here or you're listening and you don't have the power of God in your life, repent of what you know has blocked it, and then do the things you know to do. We, we, we preachers sometimes just make the Christian life so complicated. It's not. It's not easy, but it's not complicated. It's just do what you know you're supposed to do. Do what the Word tells you to do. Now, you can't do that in your own strength. That's why you stay connected to the power of the Holy Spirit. And you get that axe head sharp, and it's amazing the work you can do. You stay connected with God. You get things done and you look back and you said, how in the world did I ever get through that? I would imagine there are some people in this room who've been through some things in your life that you thought when you were in the middle of it, this is the end of me. But you made it. And you made it because you stay connected to God. And you look back and you say, what do you know? <laughs> His power got me through it. God got me through it. And that's the good news. That no matter how tough things get, no matter how discouraged you may be today, no matter how burdened you may be today, God's power is available. And Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he says, our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or even think. And that's good news. Father, help us to stay connected to you. In the busyness of life, in the frustration of life, uh, it, it's, it's human nature, and of course the devil helps us, just to start drifting away. And Lord, help us to stay alert. Help us to stay connected to you. Help us to realize that no matter how busy things get, we've got to pray. <laughs> we've got to stay connected to you. We've got to keep the power strip on so that your power can flow through us. So, Lord, we don't have to ask you to do what you do. We just need to ask you to help us to do what we know we must to keep the connection open so that your power can flow through us. So that as we live our lives each and every day, at the end of the day, we can say, thank you, Lord, for your help today. Thank you for that wisdom to know how to speak to that person. Thank you for the courage to face that challenge. Thank you for the peace in the midst of the storm. Thank you, God, for your power in our lives. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine on you and give you his peace now and evermore. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for coming today. Thanks for joining in. You're dismissed.